Hey everybody, Wendy Klinky with Blue Cat Studio. It is day 11 of the Advent Ornament Challenge. Today we're gonna do an owl. So I'm gonna teach you how to do that. First, you're gonna go ahead and do a little trace and we're gonna walk through the freehanding of this so that you're not completely confused and lost when we go for this. I'm also gonna tape my actual ornament down to my little rotatable cardboard handy surface. All right, so how are we gonna do this? We will begin by drawing kind of our top lines and our bottom lines. And this time around, we wanna have our line, let's see, okay, here's our, oh my gosh, you guys, all right, I got it crooked. Pretend this thing is over here, right? All right, we got this. So our center line is here, top line here, bottom line here. And you notice that we've got a little bit more space than last time. We're gonna draw a second line here. So it's basically like if this section was divided into three, it will be the top third of this little part. So we're gonna do two little circles here, just like last time, like we did with the fox and an oval. Then we're going to kind of create some spots right here, a little bit to either side. And we're gonna just kind of make a little round body part. Boom. Now you notice it's not a perfect oval. It's a little bit wider up here. And it, you know, it's almost like it, it makes like a teardrop shape. You see how we have kind of a teardrop shape there? So you think of it that way, like a teardrop. Uh-oh, we got a Facebook page that is running and it's gonna make a whole lot of noise. I'm gonna close that sucker out right now. Okay, so then from here, we can basically, we can do a little upside down triangle or tier, like a circle with a triangle for his beak. Keep it small. And then from right on either side of his cheek, we can bring the wings down. And then we'll flare some little ears out. Now, unlike the fox, we want these to be little ears and we want them going out kind of to either side as opposed to on top. So little triangles just kind of plop off to each side. Holly just checked in. Hey, Holly, how's it going? If you're watching, don't forget to say hi. All right, so we've got a basic shape for an owl, right? And then you'd kind of put some little, little beads for toes, like little circles. So now that you have kind of the basics, you know, and then we can kind of fill in the eyes and blah, 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 give them eyelids, whatever makes you happy, kind of make it bigger. But I'm hoping that that kind of lesson makes sense. So now we're going to go for realsy real and do it on this guy. So I'm going to very gently, lightly sketch my center line. Now I'm purposely making this hard to see so that I don't have to work quite as hard to get the paint not to show or for the paint to cover it. That's what I'm trying to say. So again, we do the little circles on either side of the line. You can kind of see that, right? Kind of, kind of. Right, make sure I'm staying centered. And then we make a little oval to close it up. Maybe his little beak there, little center piece. And then it kind of makes that teardrop shape like so. And then little ears, boop. And then I'll sort of do his wings out on either side. And then we can kind of extend those wings a little bit so they kind of come out almost like little leaves. That might be a little extra there. But I feel like that's pretty good. You know, we now have a sense of where we want our owl to be. Okay. So now you're going to go ahead and grab some Tuscan red or any kind of like a cool Christmassy type of red. This one has got a lot of blue in it. Whoop. Paint boogers. And where's my place to put paint boogers? Not the floor. And then just any old brush will do. I'm going to grab just kind of a square brush. Just get a good base. So we're gonna do the outside portion of this red and we're gonna, you know, mostly go around the owl guy. If you get a little overlap here and there, not the end of the world. So fair warning y'all, I have not been good about getting sleep this week. So if I just space out on you for a second, bear with me. <laughs> I'm drying. I'm definitely going to bed after this. Actually, my son has a, a rock climbing competition tomorrow morning in Norfolk, which is about three hours away. So definitely got to go to bed early so we can get up. And I'm excited for him. It's his very first competition. I tried rock climbing and bouldering. And let me tell you, um, I could do half of like the very beginner one. That's about all I got in me. Okay. Well, that looks more like a, a, a cricket or something. but. It's gonna be an owl, I swear. So offload the red paint from your brush, get as much of it off as you can. 
and go ahead and rinse it out and dry it with a paper towel, kind of standard protocol, what we always do. Go ahead and while we're doing that, squeeze some white onto your palette. So we're gonna do kind of like a, just a gentle birch tree background. However, 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 we want to be delicate with the birch trees and with the white. Don't make it um, completely, um, don't make it opaque completely. So here's like just a little mock-up sketch I did. You see how you can actually see the red, whoops, you can see the red through. That's what we're aiming for. So I'm gonna kind of just grab little bits of that white on my palette and just kind of work it into the bristles. If there's a little bit of red left over, that's fine. But notice my brush isn't like super coated. And then let's see here, Let me just look at my reference. We'll maybe do like um kind of a a tree here and let's let's make them wiggly waggly, right? We don't want them to be straight. Wiggly waggly. Maybe a couple of branches coming off, a little bit wider at the bottom. Maybe something else over here. Because, oh, so my point for this is if you make it too bright, then it's gonna really compete with the owl because we're working in a very, we're working in a very small space. So again, I'm just getting the <laughs> wiggly waggly. I know, see how gentle. Well, so I, I'm actually, because this is slightly damp, and I've really worked the paint into the bristles. Like, so here's what a normal paint looks like on a, bris on a brush, right? So if I just wipe all that off and I'm back down to this, that's how much paint I have. And so just gonna, and so I'm almost kind of scrubbing it in so that it kind of gets that pink look. And we'll add more detail later, but we want it to be lighter. Again, if it's too bold and too bright, the whole, the owl is just going to sink into the background and start to be a little confusing. So take as much creative license as you like with the tree. Like have fun. However, we are going to do one branch and we'll do it this guy over here. That's a little bit bolder than the rest of them, a little bit brighter white. So you can get a little more paint on, but again, still keep it, keep it light, keep it loose. We'll just kind of give Mr. Owl a branch to sit on. And I'm just kind of just kind of dabbing and bringing that paint. And I may need to let some of this dry before I add more paint to it, just because it's it has picked up a lot of that red pigment, which is fine because the slightly pinker pinker look is going to help it recede into the background. And you can do a couple of nibs on it or whatever that make it just look slightly different from the from the other branches. Okay. And so since we're here and these are kind of in the background, we're gonna keep working on the trees before we go into the owl, simply because trying to do all the stuff around the owl once it's done is, you know, you just be ready to kill me. So from either side of the branch, whoops, that's too much paint. I'm gonna take some of my paint off. Dab, dab, dab. We're gonna kinda, let's take this guy sideways. Sort of place it around the edge and just pull little bits. And you see how it's dry brushing and it's just bringing little tiny, bits of paint. Hopefully that, hopefully that's visible. Let me zoom it up here a little bit so you can see. Come on, autofocus. A little bit here, a little bit here. And again, it's always fine to start with a little not enough, a little not enough, a little less than necessary, um, and then add more later. It is much harder to subtract the paint after you've put it in. So it's kind of like a birch and we're just kind of alternating little, little bits of that bark. So I'm kind of going back and forth, back and forth. All right, it's kind of coming together. And I'm still using a flat brush. We could also do this with a liner brush, but I do love flat brushes in some respects because I can kind of can kind of get some crisp, some crisp lines with them. But they can also be a little bit broken. I don't have it. It doesn't have to be perfect here, right? We're just trying to sort of show that, yep, those are trees. Just giving the trees little outlines. 
Happy little trees, right? I'm not Bob Ross. I don't have an afro. In fact, I haven't got a curly hair on my head. But I love to paint just like you. Okay, here we go. Just kind of bring it down. And so you see how it's kind of adding gentle, gentle amounts of detail. A little bit here and there, a little bit here and there. Again, if it was bright white, it would just completely overpower Mr. Owl. And I think that's given, whoops, we'll add just a little bit more brightness to this front one so that it kind of pops out. Bring this guy here, and I guess his little toes are right there, so I need to kind of have the branch come all the way through. All right, we got that. And again, if you're watching and you want to say hi, please feel free. If you have questions, ask them. Um, I'm going to go ahead and offload my, my brush and give it a slight rinse. And I think, in fact, we'll probably be better to move on to a smaller brush. So a couple of options. We don't want a detail brush quite yet, but that's going to be coming soon. If you have a really small flat square brush like this, these are kind of awesome because they kind of give you that same ability to control edges. Um, hey, Melanie, what's up? Melanie says hi. Um, however, you know, if you have just a small round brush as well, that's, that's great. Um, you know, small to medium, something like this might work. However, I'm finding like right now, especially as we have all these little tiny crevices and such a small detail thing that these tend to splay out. And then I kind of lose the whole point of my whole point of my, my point. Whereas this guy stays very flat because it's a narrow strip of, all right, I'm talking too much. Let's get going. So let's get some of your mermaid tail teal. Hey, yeah, Mel says late night painting. I know. I, I just don't feel like I had it. I didn't have it together today. <laughs> so we're going to grab some white and plop it here and a little bit of that mermaid tail and mix it together to bring, bring it down. So if you don't have mermaid tail, um, you could totally get away with a color like Laguna, maybe even Bahama blue. So don't stress if you don't have mermaid tail. Also peacock teal is good. And like the folk art teal is really wonderful. And we're just going to get kind of a basic color coding on this guy. So it's like his little ear tips that my round brushes I've just been failing miserably with recently. Because of course, you know, I probably paint this guy like two or three times to kind of fine tune it before I go live with you guys. We're just going to fill in really pretty much everything. Try and avoid the beak just because, you know, we don't need that orange to be picking up those kind of teal back, back colors. So if you watched my, um, the live I did was it the other day when we did the cactus one, but it was the planning session where we created color swatches. It's interesting because this is one of those projects where I had an idea in mind and I tried to just go for it and it really did not look good. And I was like, Oh, look, Wendy, you're breaking your own rules. You need to sit down and create the color swatches that tell you like what colors you like. So for example, you know, I broke out my, I broke out my bright, like true red, and I broke out my, um, my uh, Tuscan red, and then I put the mermaid tail next to them, and then I kind of watered them down with some, some white, and I was just like, oh, wow, like these two worked, and these two just had that sort of clashy feel. And so if you don't have the exact colors I have, do just do the, um, you know, put the colors that you think are going to work together side by side and see how they feel. And that's one way to kind of really kind of get your plan down very, very quickly um, without having to commit to canvas and then going back and being like, why doesn't this work? I don't like it. Cause I was like, Oh yeah, we'll do like pink and turquoise or pink and teal or pink and mint. Just give them a little tiny like tail. I guess we'll give them a little tiny tail. Uh, no, I don't think he wants a tiny tail. Where's the baby wipes? There they are. I think just that little, that little tiny nub of a tail was all we needed. All right, magic baby wipes to the rescue. Yeah, 
just a little tail. I'm sure it spreads out when he flies. Okay, so good. Now we've got like a nice base coat on. I'm gonna grab a little bit more of the mermaid tail or the dark teal, whatever it is that you've got. And we're gonna kind of come around and swoop over the tops of his, his head. And then kind of coming down. Hopefully you kind of, what? Thought the cat was gonna knock over the Christmas tree. I was like, "Yo, come on, guys! Not, not while I'm live." And so, just kind of bringing along the top, and then kind of arcing down around the, the where the eyeballs are gonna be to kind of focus the kind of focus the thing here. Oh, and we have Peyton and Sydney is there. Hi, Peyton. I'm so glad you could join me, Peyton. I feel like uh, my niece and nephew have cousins named Peyton and Sydney. Okay, so I like just painting and not talking. Um, <laughs> so we're kind of outlining below the neck, kind of with a darker teal and the insides of the wings. So we're just gonna kind of begin to darken that section. And I really like having that first light base coat because it just allows us to just kind of relax and get the color in. And if we don't do a perfect job, well, it still looks good. And so we've kind of left space for his, for his eyes and his face. All right, but he's well filled in. All right, I'm gonna darken just to, actually, you know, here's a cool trick. I'm gonna grab a little bit of the, the mermaid tail or the deep teal and a little chunk of the red. And we're gonna mix them together right here to create kind of a, a deep purpley color. Now you guys, probably see me do this a lot because the mermaid tail does it does crazy awesome things when you mix it and that's also why I like using it in conjunction with a Tuscan red because they're both you know in the in the blue zone quote unquote oh Peyton says Peyton Peyton likes the picture thank you Peyton you can paint this too all right so we're getting just a little bit of darkness kind of kind of under the chin and kind of just around, creating like a, just a little shadow. It's not a lot, and we're gonna tone that a bit in a second, but you know, we'll actually use it to kind of pull down and create a little definition, little definition. And then we'll put some right here where the, the, little, toe, the little toes are gonna be. We'll come over those toes with some orange to brighten them up, um, but I do like having kind of the darker base. Oh, you don't have paint? Oh, okay. Well, you might be able to get away with doing this with um, like colored pencils or crayons or watercolors or whatever. But even so, just watching is sometimes really, really fun. I'm going to offload my brush to get get rid of the excess paint and come back in. Now, there's still a little bit of that. I haven't rinsed it. I'm counting on a little bit of that kind of purpley mishmash to be left in there. So grabbing a touch of that teal just coming right up into where we just did that purple. I'm just gonna blend a little bit. Come up in here, get in there, and blend a little bit. So now it doesn't really look all that purpley. It just, it's just nicely darkened. And we've kind of softened the edges that got a little bit harsh. All right, go ahead and rinse your brush. We'll offload it first, get rid of the excess pigment. All right, we are well rinsed, dry it off, of course. And now I think we do want to go with a smaller brush. Um, and this is where a round one would be great. All right, oh, here it is. I'm gonna grab the white. I'm gonna smoosh it into this, this light turquoise that we already mixed, just a little bit, just to keep it from being too stark a white. A little bit light. I'm gonna come in and draw little circles here right next to the eyes or not right next to the eyes, right next to the beak. We're drawing the eye circles next to the beak. There we go. Okay, and then with that same paint, we're gonna come into the belly and start to just kind of place the paintbrush in little dots, almost like scales, but they're gonna make like this little feather pattern, just in like a little row, boom, boom, boom. 
doesn't have to be perfect, but try and keep it kind of in rows. That just gives it sort of a pattern and a sense of a sense of rhythm. Whoops, some of my brushes got strokes got a little bit too big there, but so now we kind of have like an owl feathery look in the in the tummy. And we'll bring just a little bit of the light kind of along along the tips of his wings, just a little kissy kiss. So it's it's like this is almost dry brushing. I'm trying not to get too much paint on, just almost like just the bits that are on the tips. Just to kind of slightly get a little highlight there on either edge of the wing, but not all the way to the edge. We still want some of the dark part to be there. I'll come back in with a little bit more pure white on top of the eyes. Just a little bit inside that circle. Now he looks like he's got goggles on or something. Totally cool. Go ahead and offload your paint. And while we're here, I'm gonna give this a quick blow dry just so that it, I'm not dragging white paint around. So if you have some of that purple left over that we mixed, grab some. And we're just gonna make like a little little circle in the middle for his for his pupil. Yep, that's the word I'm looking for. Pupil. And if you make them even a slightly diagonal or oval, just slightly offset, then it's gonna make him look like like he kind of looks like he's looking off in that direction. I didn't do the perfect round one. Maybe I need to mix just a little bit more paint. Again, that's the red and it's a blue cool red and the teal, which makes that gorgeous kind of wonderful, neutral, all purpose purple. If I'd used like a true red, which would be a lot oranger, the effect would have been very, very different. Okay, I think that'll work. Offload and then we're gonna pick out the orange to do his his toes and did I not bring the orange out? No, I had the red out. Well, that's fine. I have orange everywhere in this house. Okay. So I'm grabbing some jack-o'-lantern orange. Any old orange you can. Oh, let's see. So Holly asked if I can show the size of the brush real quickly. Sure. So let's see. Oop, here it is. So far the brushes I'm using. Now I use this guy here. This is a win uh Duro Gold. 100. So there's my finger and there's the tip. I'm moving so quickly. I'm sorry. Um, so that's the size of it. This one I like for the round tip. It's not, it's, it, I can, it's starting to go south. I've used this guy a lot. The, the bristles are really splaying. So it's not great for detail work, but it was fine for just kind of getting a, a dot in there. Now, if you're having trouble getting a dot, you could always just use the tail of your brush and kind of dot dot the color in that way in fact that probably would have been a better bet for me with this guy oh and since i'm here i'm going to grab just a teeny little dot and put a little white dot on his eyes so there's a little reflection now his eyes look like they're awake awake oh holly says i can't wait to try this little dude he's so cute isn't he thank you i love him i love him all right we'll grab some orange again if your brush is starting to get funky just roll it a few times. Now, if you don't have a brush this small and you're feeling like you're like you're despairing, you can always, it's going to be a lot slower, but you can always use a skewer. I got this in at the grocery store, it's in the kitchen section. Well, it's all kitchen, but you know, so you could use the tip of that to apply, to apply paint in detail, right? I mean, there are always options out there. And one nice thing about the skewer is that the bristles are never going to flay. They're super cheap. And when you ruin this one, you can throw it out and get another one. I use them for everything. I mean, I'm constantly, I got like clogged paint bottles and things that need poking and dots that need dotting. So I'm using these guys all the time. So I could also use the brush, but you know what? This is working out pretty well. Just kind of dot little bits of orange, kind of just in little straight lines for his toes right over top of that purple, but it's okay to let some of that purple that we mixed for the toes peek out. Cause it's just gonna look like a shadow. And that is the beauty of creating a neutral color from your, 
from your two main colors. All right, so Holly and everybody else, we last time, well, is it last yesterday, we talked about color scheme. What color scheme have we used on this one? Anybody? Anybody? It's almost, almost complimentary. Not quite, but almost. And complimentary on the color on the color wheel is basically the opposite colors. So it would be like red and green. Now this is a very green blue because um, I didn't really want a green owl. Um, but that's you know roughly the the kind of the spectrum that we're working in here. So now when it comes to details, I mean I think he's really cute just as is, and we could totally stop and call it good. But if you want to sketch a few extra details in, you could try with your with your skewer. Did I let me make sure I actually scrape that off? Or if you have a paint pen, you might be way happier with paint pens, my friends. But not everybody has them. You could scratch little little tiny curves. Now I'm going to do this with a paint pen and show it off. Otherwise, you'll be here all day waiting on me to see what I'm doing. But you can just kind of do little curves to kind of enunciate that's not the right word but it kind of means the same thing accentuate those little feathers big trick when it comes to paint pens or any kind of pens make sure that you're not um, doing it on wet paint if your paint is wet you will ruin your pen so this one is a jelly roll 08 um, from sakura um, any old like paint pen will do uh, there's really great inexpensive brands from amazon the artistro brand i absolutely love i'm gonna add just a little bit of a highlight kind of in here in the ears then we could decide if we wanted to add like a little bit of motion just a cute little line on the outer portion of either of both sides of his eyes can you see that I'm gonna bring that up it's right here and here right here and here and that little line just kind of soft softens him and makes him look like he's smiling and kind of happy if you wanted you could add a little bit of detail whoops are we clogging up maybe a little bit of detail like on his wing, but not too much, just a pinch. So as a reminder, if you, um, if you, if or if or when you paint this, I would absolutely love to see yours because everybody has a different style and it's, it's just so cool. Um, and so you just use the hashtag, um, whatever hashtag it is we've got here. Advent ornament challenge. You think I'd, I'd have that down by now. All right, so if we want to go further with this, we could stop here. We really could. I think this guy wants just a little bit of black in a few spots for definition. I could also put black on the trees, but I feel like that would start to compete with the owl. And we really want the owl to take center stage. So now I'm going with one of my mermaid um, fine line brushes. You'll notice it's got a really long, long bristles and very few of them. This is actually a nail brush. I got it on Amazon. I love them because they look cool they feel nice and they do a great job so then we could kind of come around and just add a little bit of a gentle outline to this guy now if your paint is acting up you can always get a little bit of water on the tip of your brush and and just kind of water down a little bit of paint over here off to the side on your palette and that's just gonna whoops that's gonna make the black paint flow a little smoother Hopefully I didn't overwater it. Sometimes that happens. And it sometimes allows you to get an even finer point and it makes it last a little longer so you don't have to jump back, you know, into your paint, you know, halfway through a stroke. All right, so we'll do a little bit of a finishing rounding here on his little underside. I think I want a little definition on the just on the tree that, that he's standing on. So again, we want, we kind of want to emphasize certain pieces and de-emphasize others. So he's got his white branch and tree bit that he's on. And again, if you're not sure about the whole black lining thing and you're like, I don't know about that, you're welcome to watch. And if you love it, do it. If you're like, no, Wendy, I don't like it, then don't do it. I won't be offended. We're here to have fun and make something you like. Again, just adding a little bit more water again to kind of keep that black flowing. 
my life sort of changed after I got these mermaid mermaid ones. And now you don't have to get ones with a mermaid tail. I just thought they were so much fun. Um, so somebody's asking, and I apologize. Um, it, you come up as Facebook user, and that's just because I'm using StreamYard. So you may need to click the link that said that will actually show me your name. But it says, could you use paint pens for it all or are they more for the details? So you could probably do paint pen for all of this. You'd have to let stuff dry in between. Um, I personally feel like I'm just really comfortable with a brush and I have the colors I like and I can apply it in wide swaths. Whereas with a paint pen, sometimes you end up, you know, getting kind of a scratchy scrubby feel. But if paint pen is your thing and that's your medium, you may be very, very successful with it but it also requires you to have a lot of colors. Not everybody does. So I always love to have like the black and the white ones. So for what I'm doing now, you could totally do a paint pen. And make sure I'm staying on camera here. Sorry guys, let's see, Oop, this way. I feel like his beak. Now, if you're doing this after watching, you could make the owl a little bit bigger. I think in my sketches, I made him bigger and then somehow I managed to get him a little bit small while we're doing, while we're live today. Um, so I think you could, there's, there's a range of things you could do. And I also think that I want his eyeballs to be bigger. I want him to be way more wide-eyed. So I'm just gonna kind of emphasize those a little bit. And this may or may not be the brush to, ugh, this brush is gonna kill me, let's try it. How am I gonna do this? I'm gonna take the back end of my, oh gosh, no I'm not. Sorry guys. <laughs> so the um, that liner brush is awesome for like big outlines, but I'm not sure I could get the tight curves for the eyeball with it. So I'm just trying to come in and make the eyes a little bit, I don't know. Let's see, we're gonna keep trying. I feel like I need special cheater glasses to see this. Can that age where, yeah. Or we need glasses, like different glasses for each task. Okay, I like that better with his eyes a little bit bigger. They were too small. Um, so Holly has another question. One, is he totally, is he totally dry while I'm outlining? You know, he is pretty dry simply because I do this on wood and I don't do a base coat. And so the wood really sucks in a whole lot of the moisture from this. Um, so yeah, he is, he's, he's pretty close to dry. Oh, and you know what we could add if you want just a little bit of detail to his little toes, that's gonna be up to you. And then the question is, should we add glitter to the trees? I'm feeling like some glitter on those tree stock, tree stalks, tree, tree things might be good. What do you guys think? And again, that's if you have glitter. The glitter I use most often is the um, Craft Smart glitter paint crystal or crystal, you know, depending on how fancy you are. Um, it goes on, it goes, yeah, it has a beautiful kind of iridescent shimmer. All right, it's, it's pretty fun. Let me blow dry this guy first, though, just to make sure that the black is totally dry. So I'm not smudging black into my Macristan of glitter. That would, that, would, that would not be good, right? Okay, I think that's gonna work. So hair dryers are also another one of those like really wonderful tools um, that one doesn't necessarily associate with an art studio, but they're so great when you have, ooh, this brush is falling apart. Look at that, like bristles. You didn't realize how long those bristles are. They're all the way up inside that ferrule. All right, so here's my glitter paint. It looks like white and it goes on pretty cloudy, but when it dries, it is, it is crystal clear. So I'm just kind of lumping it on. So also I think at the dollar store, they have these really cool, um, like glitter or glue sticks. You could totally use those for this as well. You don't have to use the Craftsmart stuff, although this is in an acrylic base, which I like. Um, and if you happen to have glitter on hand and don't mind the risk of the mess, I do, 
Um, you could totally do like, you know, white glue on this or, um, or any, or yeah, white glue on this and then just kind of sprinkle some glitter on. But you do also run the risk of getting kind of getting it on a little bit too thick and then not being able to see all that work you put in on those trees. So right now we can't see all that detail on the trees because I'm covering it up. But as it dries, it'll just look like shimmer and then we'll be able to see and be able to see everything. So I'm really like hunking and chunking that stuff on because I want it to be super glittery. So I've been trying on like every day when we do these things, like to try to add either like some kind of metallic paint or some kind of a glitter to each one just to kind of keep the whole collection like really festive. Because, you know, it's the Advent Ornament Challenge. I guess his branch needs some needs some some shimmer too, right? We should do that. Now, if you have like all the fancy things and have like an iridescent wash or something, you could use that. I'm trying to I'm trying to not go too hog wild on materials here. I realize some of you don't have all the stuff that I've got here, you know, a lifetime's collection. Um, so I'm trying to not make it so that every ornament you have to go shopping. But, you know, so you'll find that like the, the mermaid tail shows up in a lot of them. The Tuscan red shows up in a lot of them. We use the same orange for any time we use orange, whether it was in the candles or the fox or the snowman nose. Yeah. Okay. So now it looks funky. I'm going to give it a quick blast. So that starts to dry and then the glitter, the glitter look will emerge. And it's really hard to rush a glitter job, you know, <laughs> but you can already see that, you know, that in a couple of spots here, it's less cloudy, but I promise it will be way less cloudy. Yeah. I'm starting to see some pretty good shimmer. Can I see shimmer? Yeah. Cameras are never good. You just don't have to trust me. <laughs> I'm sure everybody loves to hear that. All right. Yep. Some of the glitter is starting to, to shimmer now. So it needs a little bit more time to dry. Um, let me see if I can bring out a couple of examples from other projects so you can see and start to trust that that glitter will do its thing. So this one was gold glitter on top of gold and just look how shiny shimmery that is. So you can totally see the, the background gold, but then it's, we went super heavy with a gold glitter on that guy. This little Fox we did two days ago. I want to say I ended up adding the glitter after, after I ended the live. Cause I was like, Oh yeah, that would be so cool. Whoops. Let's see. Here we go. Um, and so I did like a dot on top of each of the snowflakes. And so at certain angles, all you see is the snowflake, but then in like real life or right in other angles, it like really glitters. So that one's pretty fun. And then we had the, these guys, this was day one of the ornaments and it was like the pink snow trees and we had all kinds of glitter on that guy. And it's cool. Cause at this angle, you just see the painting, but then you kind of shift it. And so it does, it dries. It dries virtually, virtually invisible, but for the, but for the glitter bits. So on that note, if you have any questions, post them here. Um, if I don't see them, you know, while we're live, I'll definitely come back and answer for you. Um, and you know, if this is your first day joining us, if you just go through and search wherever it is that you're joining me from, you will be able to find links to, I think all the other, or most of the other um, tutorials. If you can't find them, just, you know, write me a note, let me know, and I will help you find the link. Oh, we forgot to finish the top of this. Right, let's pull this guy out. Check it out. I put him on pink with, okay. So, okay. Where can I find the ornaments for Peyton and Sydney? All right. So I find my ornaments on Amazon and it's like roughly 10 bucks for a pack of like 50 or 60. I've seen them at Michael's. Michael's may be sold out. I'm kind of getting that feedback from a few folks. Um, and you can get the three inch to the three and a half inch or four inch. 
I would recommend the cutout ones like this. They also have like the cute it at um, Amazon. They have the cute wood rounds, the, the wood slices. Um, let me see if I can grab some like these, but I don't like these. And the reason is that many of these don't last for a full year because Amazon vendors are not known for properly kiln drying them. So they split. So that's why I really like the wooden guys. And let's see here. So, sorry, I'm like reaching around all my stuff. So here's kind of what my package looked like. Again, this was from Michael's. They may be out, but you know, I can even you know paste a link for you if you if you want. They just come like this. So in order to get like the cool background on these guys, whoops, I've got a tape on it. The cool background, I just use like Mod Podge, Mod, yeah, Mod Podge to um, decoupage wrapping paper right onto these guys trying to keep it super simple here, you know, low maintenance. And the idea is that, you know, whether I get to it this weekend or the following weekend soon, I'm going to try to build a little structure with hooks to hang all 25 of these on so that, you know, you can have them on one, you know, all facing. Oh my gosh. Okay. So this painter's tape and the, and the decoupage and the wrapping paper aren't friends. I'm going to have to redo those. Well, rats. But the idea is that you'll have all of these facing this way. And then you can put them in any order you any order you want. And then, you know, each day that passes, you can flip one over and it'll have like the cool design on the other side. So that's my idea. And again, if you're like, no, I just want to hang out on my tree, go for it. I do have a few ideas. I apologize for not having a a full set of plans for that already. I've, <laughs> I've been a little bit swamped the last couple of weeks. Um, I'm also working on my master's degree. So had a final paper and project to do and still in the midst of that. So squeezing it in and the art time when we can, which is also why this is so much fun because we're trying to keep it to 30 minutes. Now, granted, I've already babbled on for 42, but I think you get the idea. So this guy's almost dry. I'm gonna give it a little bit more of a blast. And... Oh yeah. Oh yes. That glitter is coming out. So, so pretty. It's still wet. There's still, you know, some cloudy parts, but probably by tomorrow it'll be absolutely gorgeous. But there we go. Oh, I think I'm seeing some glitter shimmer light there now. Hopefully you guys can see that. Anyways, um, I'm going to, I'm going to call it a night. And again, if you guys have more questions, feel free to put them in the comments. If you like this and you know somebody else who might enjoy this, if you're joining me from a group, invite someone to the group. Um, if it's a public group um, or if this is just on my Facebook page, feel free to share it. Let folks know because this is always more fun when a whole bunch of folks are doing it. And again, once you do it, post with Advent Ornament Challenge hashtag so that we can find you and I can see your stuff and be like, oh my gosh, you're awesome. Because you know what you guys are. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great night. Bye.